Hey, I'm Jared Martin with World Purple, and this is Unscripted. We often get the question, can I use an additive with Rural Purple engine oils? Uh, the answer is no, but you really don't need to. The Rural Purple produces fully formulated products, and we make several lines of products depending on the application. So whether you're looking for a spec product, whether you're looking for something with uh, higher zinc phosphorus, whether you're looking for something for full-blown racing, or even for something for high mileage, we manufacture only fully formulated products and no additional additives are necessary. What causes oil to degrade and how often should I change my oil? So oil degradation is really, uh, as the oil begins to oxidize, it begins to break down. Uh, also, there are certain additives that will get depleted, uh, mainly your detergency, your dispersancy. Also, you'll, you know, while you do have filtration on it, uh, you, know, you have abrasive wear, you have corrosive wear, so oil has alkalinity, uh, which is, will deplete over time. So, one of the byproducts of combustion is, is a buildup of acids. So that's why oils have alkalinity in them. And once that alkalinity is depleted, it's, it's pretty much going to be time to change the oil. So there's several different factors, you know, internal to the oil that's going to make you want to change the oil. Now, question we get a lot is how often do I change my oil? How often do I need to change royal purple? That's such a subjective question, to be honest with you. But as an oil company, we need to come up with a answer, right? So what we recommend with our high-performance oils is the maximum a manufacturer will allow for. You know, this is usually going to be for under warranty applications. For the HMX, HPS, XPR, uh, we recommend 15,000 miles. Now that doesn't mean that's the extent of the oil. So that means that's what we're comfortable as a blanket statement recommending. If you really want to go the maximum drain interval, there's only one way to do it, and that's through trend oil analysis. Not a single oil analysis or a single data point, you need to do trend oil analysis. This is very common in fleet applications, both in industrial as well as with rolling stock, but there's really no other way to tell that piece of equipment operated in those conditions as such is going to be able to go X miles, X hours, whatever it is. So trend oil analysis is really the only way to determine that. So, you know, I, I equate it to, would you go your entire life without going to the doctor and having blood work done. No, no. So why would you want to maximize a drain interval without looking at the oil? So what is the difference between a mineral oil and a synthetic oil? Well, it comes down to basically how they're refined, molecular structure. So I always make a comparison, try to give people a visual of what we're talking about here. So pretend you're walking on the beach and you see a broken beer bottle and you pick it up and you've got sand, different sized pieces of glass, just kind of a mess. Okay, that would be your conventional oil. Now in this hand, I have a handful of marbles. No impurities, they're all the same size, they're all clean. So that would give you kind of a really good visual of really what you're talking about with conventional oil versus synthetic oil. If you're just resting on the merits of the synthetic base stock, you're never gonna produce a very good fluid. You can't stop there. Additives of an engine oil make up about 15 to 25 percent of the finished formulation and they are really what's doing all the work. So I often tell people you have to look at your base oils as really just being a carrier for your additives. So additives are, are doing the work. You know, engine oils have a very complex job. So they have to cool, they have to clean, they have to seal, they have to lubricate. So very complex job. And you know, other than providing basic hydrodynamic lubrication, additives are doing everything else. And that has always been Royal Purple's focus, Royal Purple's core competency. You know, Royal Purple began and is centered around the Centerlec technology, which is a very high film strength technology. And so we're using a synthetic base stock because it gives us a better starting point. But the additives are really what defines not only Royal Purple from our competitors, but additive technology is really what defines any two brands of product. Because base stock is base stock, whether you're using a group five, group four combo, a group four, a group three, whatever you're using, 
you're really not going to be significantly better than anybody else until you get to that 15 to 25 percent additives. That's where performance is truly defined. So what is the API? So the Automotive Petroleum Institute, uh, it's comprised of engine manufacturers as well as oil manufacturers. And what they do is they set the standards for new lubricants. You know, mainly engine oils is their focus. So when an engine manufacturer is coming out with a new platform, there may be new challenges such as additional heat because of turbos, uh, additional hydraulic needs because of variable valve timing, you know, what have you. So they work with the oil companies to set the standards by uh, essentially by which all oils will be judged. So what we've seen though over the past probably 15, 20 years is increasing chemical restrictions uh, significantly. So we've seen anti-wear just in the past 10, 15 years reduce 20, 25, sometimes 30%. Uh, depending on the viscosity. So that's more coming from the ILSAC side, which is a very similar type governing body. So you've got the API as well as ILSAC that are setting these broad standards. Now each manufacturer will have their own spec, but a lot of them are met by either uh, ILSAC and or API. You know, Royal Purple has always offered uh, API, ILSAC licensed oils. Uh, we offer also a couple of grades that are DEXAs. But at the same time, with those increasing chemical restrictions, we said, well, hey, uh, we can do a lot better than this and we can formulate you know, well above the bar. You know, the interesting thing that some people make the misconception is that API ILSAC is some type of aspirational spec. No, probably as a, as a manufacturer, the easiest thing to do is to manufacture to an API or ILSAC spec. It's more difficult to manufacture performance beyond that. So rather than formulating down here, uh, you're formulating well above the bar. And the, the problem with API and ILSAC is that bar becomes increasingly small with every passing service classification. So you're seeing more stringent standards. Uh, it's becoming more difficult to make a better performing product uh, within those standards. So with the HPS line, as well as obviously with our XPR line, we have very purposely uh, foregone uh, API or LSAC licensing so we can formulate a, a much higher performing product. So a lot of people ask, uh, I just bought a brand new XYZ. Uh, 2020 year model. Is Royal Purple going to void my warranty or will it satisfy my warranty? The simple answer is we will satisfy your warranty requirements. Royal Purple has always offered uh, licensed API as well as ILSAC engine owners. So it's going to meet or exceed you know, manufacturer specifications for warranty. Is Royal Purple going to satisfy the warranty of my European vehicle? So actually Royal Purple 5W40 as well as 0W40 uh, meet a lot of uh, manufacturer specs as well as ACEA specs. So for the most up-to-date information on that, you're going to want to visit our site at royalpurple.com.